sulfur is in the same chemical family as oxygen, and therefore it also has six valence electrons. With six electrons, it cannot complete its octet, and it turns out to have two unpaired electrons. In reactions with metals, sulfur can accept two electrons. They become the sulfide ion, S2-. To form the bluish structure for this species, uh, we start with our six valence electrons, and then we have to add two more electrons, and we know we have to do that because of the minus two charge. So that gives us six plus two gives us a total of eight electrons. And we see that now sulfide is an ion with a complete octet, therefore satisfied. Sulfur, being in the third row of the periodic table, uh, has room for more than eight electrons. It can expand its octet. But in this particular uh, ion, it does not need to. It just simply satisfies the octet rule. The compound with the chemical formula SOCl2 is called thionyl chloride. Thionyl chloride is an important reagent in organic synthesis. In constructing the Lewis structure, first we want to lay out the overall connect connectivity of the molecule. So we recognize that of all the atoms here, sulfur is the largest and the least electronegative. So therefore, we will put it in the center as our central atom. Next, we need to add up the number of valence electrons in the molecule. Both sulfur and oxygen have six valence electrons each. So therefore, in total, they contribute 12 electrons. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and there are two such atoms, so the chlorines are going to contribute 14 electrons. The total is 12 plus 14 equals 26 electrons for thionyl chloride. We combine and connect all the atoms to the central atom using a single bond, but in the case of oxygen, we put a double bond. Now, if we put a single bond here, we would also satisfy the octet rule for, um, for oxygen, if we did that. It turns out that we know from experimental evidence that this sulfur-oxygen bond is more nearly a double bond than a single bond. But we notice to get the double bond character here that we have to have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons for sulfur. So uh, one of the resonance structures that turns out to be among those most important is the one where uh, sulfur has 10 electrons, but it forms a double bond to oxygen. We could also likewise draw a structure where sulfur only has eight electrons and oxygen only has eight electrons, and we have them connected by a single bond. Sulfur trioxide has the chemical formula SO3. Typically, this gas forms from the oxidation of sulfur dioxide. Sulfur trioxide is of industrial importance because it is a key intermediate in the synthesis of sulfuric acid, one of the most widely produced chemicals in the world, known as the king of chemicals. Sulfur trioxide can also combine with water droplets in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid, which precipitates down to earth as acid rain. In constructing the Lewis structure for sulfur trioxide, we notice that both oxygen and sulfur are in the same family of the periodic table. Each contributes six valence electrons to a compound. Since there are four atoms here, we have a total of 24 electrons in our system. We have displayed a resonance structure that, sa that simultaneously satisfies the octet rule for all three of the oxygens. 
it satisfies the octet rule for sulfur and in fact it even expands the octet because sulfur has two four six eight ten twelve electrons beyond the expected and required eight so this has three double bonds between sulfur and oxygen and as we know this will be one of the possible resonance structures Here is a second resonance structure with the same 24 electrons, but now we have two sulfur-oxygen double bonds and one uh, sulfur-oxygen single bond. As a result, even though all three oxygens satisfy the octet rule, we notice that for sulfur, we have two, four, six, eight, now 10 electrons. So while we've exceeded the octet, we have not exceeded the octet by as much as we had for the previous resonance structure. In this third resonance structure, we notice that again with the same 24 electrons, we can't change the number of electrons because that would violate the law of conservation of leptons. But now we have two sulfur oxygen single bonds and one double bond. As a result, we see that now sulfur has two four, six, eight electrons. So it satisfied the octet, but it has not exceeded in this particular resonance structure. If you continue this idea of swapping out single bonds and double bonds, a structure that you might propose might be as follows, where we have entirely a molecule of sulfur oxygen single bonds. And we notice that we satisfy the octet rule for all three of the oxygens. But look for sulfur, two, four, six only. We're electron deficient for sulfur. This generally won't happen in a compound. So we will not expect sulfur to be electron deficient. Therefore, we, since sulfur can expand the octet, but it has to have an octet, at least. And since we'd only have six electrons here, we would suspect strongly that this is an invalid structure. So. We would not propose this as a reasonable resonance structure for sulfur trioxide because sulfur does not satisfy its octet in this particular proposed incorrect structure. The thiocyanate ion has the chemical formula SCN minus. We notice that carbon contributes four electrons nitrogen contributes five, and sulfur contributes six. That gives us a total of 15 electrons. Then we recall that it is a minus one charge on the ion. So we add one more electron to get 16 electrons. The most likely structure for our compound makes use of the fact that we already know the structure, for example, of the cyanide ion. And it turns out in thiocyanate, that the uh, connectivity of carbon with nitrogen is the same. And the difference is we have the addition next to the carbon of sulfur. So we know from experimental evidence that the uh, bond order between sulfur and carbon is mostly single bond and between carbon and nitrogen is a triple bond. We also know that there's a lone pair on nitrogen at this end. So this is minus one charge. And we see that in this particular compound, it's ion, that the octet rule is satisfied for sulfur, it is satisfied for carbon, 2, 4, 6, 8, and for nitrogen, 2, 4, 6, 8. So we're able to satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms, and there is no need to expand the octet for this particular ion. The selenocyanate ion has the structure Se CN, and it is largely analogous to the thiocyanate ion. And it works well with the Lewis structures since selenium is in exactly the same family as sulfur and oxygen. Therefore, it has six valence electrons, 15 electrons by adding the atoms together, and then we add one additional electron for the minus one charge of the selenocyanate ion. So we have a 16 electron system and we see that we're able to satisfy the octet rule for carbon and nitrogen, as well as the selenium, though we could 
has the option of expanding the octet for selenium in certain compounds, there is no need to do so in this particular ion. The cyanate ion is again largely analogous to the selenocyanate and thiocyanate ions in that we have an ion with a total number of 16 electrons. And we notice that the similarity of the pattern of bonding among all three of those ions. But we notice for oxygen, for example, that while we satisfy the octet rule, we never had the option to expand the octet because oxygen is in the second row, so we can never expand the octet for it. So we see that for the cyanate ion, we're much more limited in the uh, allocation of our electrons for the system. If we replace oxygen in the hydroxyl group, we get a new group called the sulfhydryl group. And if we introduce the sulfhydryl group in the same areas where a, a hydroxy group would form an alcohol, we get the sulfur analog of the alcohols, which are commonly called mercaptans. So this particular compound here, CH3SH, would go by the name of methyl mercaptan. We notice that sulfur has six valence electrons, carbon has four, and then each of the hydrogens contributes one electron. So this is going to be a 14 electron system. And we can satisfy the duet rule for each of the hydrogens. We can satisfy the octet rule for carbon and for sulfur by having a carbon sulfur single bond which is roughly analogous to the carbon-oxygen bond in an alcohol.